Hi, welcome to Shelly Studio, and today we are going to do a simple landscape. This uh, landscape is inspired by a YouTube channel called The Mind of Watercolor. And I was watching him the other day, and he talked about how you should practice your landscape. It's a three layer landscape and atmospheric atmospheric perspective. They don't, he didn't call it atmospheric perspective, but that's how I've always learned it. Um, the atmosphere comes between you and what's in the distance, and so it gets lighter and kind of bluer or grayer as it goes back, and so that's what we're going to attempt. So here I'm painting the foreground. I'm trying to use a bright color. This is a um, little bit of brown and some orange and yellow to get this color, and I'm trying to make it so that it's not flat. So I added you know, drips of color in there to get some dimension, some interest in there. And so this is um, the same color, but I've added a little bit of blue to it and trying to make it lighter than the foreground, but I still end up putting too much on there. And I decided I wanted some trees or something. I didn't want just flat ground. Wanted it to be a little bit more interesting than that. And so I am just using a angle brush for the whole thing. Um, I think it works pretty good for the coverage. And it's okay with holding the water color, but uh, it doesn't hold a ton. So I decided it was not dark enough, not interesting enough. So I am putting another layer of color down. Um, I think I end up making it a little bit too much the same value as the foreground. But we'll work on that. The idea of doing these simple landscapes is to practice. So here, to try and bring the foreground forward, I add some yellow over the top in areas. I didn't want an even coat, I just wanted to add some interest. And to kind of bring that more forward. I think it helps a little bit. I also decide that um, we're going to lighten up the area just where they connect, kind of give it a misty sort of uh, you know, distance. That way it'll look like it's behind there somewhere. Sorry I keep saying um a lot. I've noticed it um, <laughs> like right there. I can't help myself. I try. I almost did it again. <laughs> I think it's my brain catching up with my mouth. <laughs> so the next um, layer in this landscape, I put a, even a lot more blue on there. Kind of has a purpley tone to it. I added a little bit more brown there. I decided it needed some more brown. I just go through and do this, turning it upside down so that I can get into all those nooks and crannies I created a little bit easier. And this, I did switch to the round brush so that I could do this area. Because it just gives me a little bit better point. I do that and I look at it and I'm like, it looks the same value. It's um, a different color, but it doesn't look like it's any further back. I am giving this one, you know, some trees in the distance and bumps and stuff just to make it more interesting. And I want some dimension on it because it looks really flat. So I add you know, just some more color. This would be it's all still wet, but it's kind of like glazing, except for you're going to get water blooms when you put wet onto wet, kind of get some blooms going, but that's okay. This is just practice and play. And here I'm trying to eliminate the white areas, but it's not really working.
So I get that all dry and I'm going in with another layer because I don't think that area is interesting enough. And you, you don't have to do layers like I'm doing. If, it, if the first um, pass looks good, leave it. This one just, I wasn't liking it very much, so I reworked it a lot. So here I'm making the middle, I think the middle ground, drying everything off. I just want it to stand out a little bit more from the distant background. So I am making it darker. I've never really painted in this order where you do the foreground, the middle, and the background. Um, I usually work from the back forward. Um, there was an Irish watercolor that he called it have some more fun and that stands for horizon sky middle and foreground so you determine your horizon you do your sky then you do your middle ground and then you would do your foreground and that's kind of always the way I've worked so this one is a little bit backwards for me Yes, I'm putting even more on the foreground. Just adding a little bit more color to brighten it up to really bring the foreground forward. The background I'm not too worried about, but the foreground just felt like it was too far away. So hopefully that helps it a little bit. And now I decided we need color in our sky. And kind of the way this landscape is going I feel like everything's falling out of the picture I don't know I don't really know the rules that well but that's how it feels so I decided I would have the um, clouds in the sky kind of streaking over the mountain so that would I don't know draw your eye down towards the center at least that's my theory <laughs> you can tell me if you think that works where your eyes are drawn to when you look at the end, the final image. But that is why I chose to do this, the sky at that angle. Because I don't think I've ever done a sky at that angle. And now I'm just kind of blending a little bit. I don't want the clouds to be overly dramatic, just kind of subtle, so I don't want the harsh, harsh lines. So um, after staring at this landscape, thinking it needed something, I decided what it needed was a cowboy. Okay, so I don't really do figures and animals. So this is my attempt of a cowboy on a horse. So I am painting a little horsey. And I think my cowboy looks a little Mexican with a sombrero and a poncho. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this a little tutorial. I will put a link to the Mind of Watercolor in the description box below. And if you did like it, please hit like, um, like, share, and comment. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.